Good morning. Welcome back. All right, what's next? Hey, we're going to talk about cross-cut sleds. Uh, looked around on the internet. As far as I know, nobody else has ever built a cross-cut sled for a table saw. So we're going to go over what a cross-cut sled is. Uh, we're going to get really in-depth in how you build a cross-cut sled. I'm going to get extremely detailed and show you everything step-by-step because there's nowhere else that you're ever going to find this information except for probably the five million other freaking videos out there about how to build a crosscut sled. If you type in crosscut sled on uh, YouTube, you're going to come up with probably more fucking choices than you're ever going to fucking be able to watch in a lifetime. Uh, so naturally I got to build or I have to make a video on how to build a crosscut sled but I'm gonna do mine a little bit different. I'm not gonna show you anything because, well, I'm not good at YouTube or building things or teaching or, I'm well, not really good at much anything. Uh, but anyways, I'm just gonna freaking uh, talk because, you know, it's my channel and uh, talking to the camera and drinking bush lights kind of my therapy and get shit off my chest from, you know, normal stress of fucking life. Uh, but I'm just going to show you the features on my crosscut sled. And if you want to see how to build your own crosscut sled, like I said, there's probably like 5 million goddamn videos out there by people who know what they're doing. Uh, I kind of probably went way overboard on the crap on my sled. Uh, a lot of stuff I probably don't need on there. I don't have a lot of T-Track accessories right now, but I've got the things that I need for my sled because I have a project coming up that I need to cut small little pieces safely and accurately on a table saw. Now, you go and watch one of these 5 million videos out there. A lot of people will use strips of hardwood as the little runners that go in the miter slot. I think that should have been the route that I would have went with, should have went with, because I don't like the route that I went. I bought this. It, can you see that? Bought it off of Amazon, 30 bucks. It comes with these two little, like, uh, I don't know, it's nylon plastic shit runners that go in there really nice they fucking they they slide nice and smoothly before you put screws in there it also came with uh two feet of uh universal t-track uh with the universal t-track it didn't even come with a fucking t-bolt it just came with a regular bolt that if you wiggle it enough you can actually get it to come out of the t-track and a little nut i don't know what the fuck purpose of that is without giving a clamp or anything like that but I do have like a spin on nut now. Uh, those nylon strips, you have to be exceedingly careful when you put screws in them. Uh, just drilling them out tends to distort their shape. And I had to spend a significant amount of time sanding to try and get them to slide in the freaking miter slots again. Uh, I had to back the screws out because even just a slight amount of pressure on there expands them out. They're kind of a pain in the ass. I wouldn't recommend buying it, but it is, you don't have to spend the time cutting strips of hardwood down to size, plus hardwood can expand and contract and humidity and whatever. With that, I also bought two universal T-Track kits off of Amazon. It is, uh, hold on, I got it, it's on here. It, they are Powertech brand, 48 inch universal T-Track with hold down clamps. Each one of them was 30 bucks. So with this kit and the two 48 inch T -track, uh, universal T-Track sets, I had a total of 10 foot of T-Track and I used all of it. So I guess uh, we can probably spin around and look at my uh, crosscut sled and see how I built mine, all the features that I put into mine that are probably overkill for the small amount of freaking time I will probably ever use it. I should probably edit this part out, but I ain't gonna. Because editing sucks ass. Let's see, what's the best? All right. Right about there. That looks pretty good. <laughs> Gotta have a uh, coaster for your beer can so you don't get fucking water rings on your uh, table saw. Uh, anyways. The blue 
is that 48 inch uh, universal T-Track. Uh, I put four strips into here. So, and these are the lockdown clamps that come with it. So you get little tiny fucking pieces. You can stick them in here. This guy will come up. Lock it down. So now I can safely cut these tiny little things. Uh, I got the T-Track that came with it is inside of here. They came, didn't come with the cross cuts. So they came with that DIY fucking strips. The gray stuff is in here. I think I cut it. I cut the miter, not miter, fucking dado. Too high for this one because my stop sits too high. I needed to drop it down like three quarters of an inch. It still works except for little tiny things like that. And I can probably either make an extension for this or buy a different one because this came with my uh, uh, precision miter gauge. Uh, if you didn't even watch that video, you know, the precision miter gauge uh, review by a moron or whatever the fuck it was called. This will go back onto that miter gauge and I'll get a different one for this one, hopefully with a little bit longer of a stop. <clears throat> uh, this, I had two extra pieces of T-Track and I screwed it to the top here because, well, I had extra fucking T-Track. Did I need it? I have no idea what I'm ever going to use this for, but you know what the fuck, screw it on there. Uh, so now if I can find an accessory that'll go on there, I got something to frick put in there. I didn't make mine out of Baltic birch plywood that apparently everybody else that I've seen videos do because Menards wanted like $90 for a sheet of Baltic birch. This, I don't remember, I think it was maple plywood or something, but it's, it's like a 10 layer freaking plywood. It's really nice and it was only 65 bucks and it lays down flat. The only thing that I noticed, I glued together two sheets up here for the front fence. I was gonna do a single piece back here for the back fence, but it had a bit of a bow to it. So I cut another piece and I freaking doubled it up and glued it onto here. But I did split the edge right here, so I gotta squirt some glue in here and clamp that together. Now, let's lift this out of here and I'll show you them little strips. See these little guys right here? They're made out of some weird fucking plastic. And if you put the screws in slightly too tight, they expand out and you can't get the damn thing to slide. Uh, when I drilled the holes and I put and I countersunk these things, it expanded out. I couldn't get it to slide. I had to do a significant amount of sanding on these things just to get it to slide. Uh, I do have a container of Minwax paste wax coming that I'll wax the whole underside of this thing that will make it slide significantly easier because it still has somewhat difficult resistance. It's not bad, but with the paste wax, this thing will slide way fucking easier. Uh, now, time-wise, uh, my dad helped me build it. I started, I cut all the pieces out initially before he came up. So it took me probably a half an hour to total time to cut the pieces out and then glue up the front and rear fences. So there's about a half an hour. And then uh, when dad and I worked on it, I think it three hours total. Uh, now, a good portion of that was trying to figure out the dado stack because it's a fairly new saw. It's a brand new set of freaking dados. Uh, I personally have never actually used a dado stack because all I've ever used in my life was just little tiny fucking tabletop contractor grade shit saws that a dado stack won't fit on. <clears throat> so this is my first time trying to figure out a dado stack. Uh, plus it's a saw stop, so not only you're changing a blade, but you also have to change out the uh, the safety brake in there, which was, a, it wasn't bad, it's pretty easy to freaking change out. Maybe I'll do a video and show you how to do that. But it's the first time you're doing it, so there was probably a good 45 minutes of fucking around trying to figure out the dado stack and the, and the brake and everything like that to get it all set up so we could run the, uh, the dados to put the uh, T-Track in. And then of course, uh, if you've watched any of my other videos, uh, me and math don't get along well. So when I freaking put in the dado stack, uh, I built the, stato, the dado stack for the thickness of the uh, T-Track not the width of the T-Track. So I had to take it back apart and rebuild the dado stack to get it three quarters of the width instead of three eighths of an uh, inch. 
<clears throat> Plus on top of that, the first time you use a data stack in a, in, a, in a saw, it comes with the table insert and you have to run the blade up through the table insert and that's kind of a scary fucking process and little shards of plastic freaking went everywhere. Uh, but anyways, this is my freaking crosscut sled. It's the first real like accessory I've built for a table saw. Uh, I've built a crosscut sled before for a contractor grade little shit fucking saw. Nearly cut the end of my thumb off because all that I had was the back fence. I didn't have this little safety block back here to let you know that your fingers aren't supposed to be anywhere near this area. Plus it was significantly smaller. It was only like this big. So I grabbed a hold of it and I ran it through and I literally missed the end of my thumb by probably less than a sixteenth of an inch. Made me pee a little. I was like, oh fuck, there's a blade right there. This one shouldn't be a problem because your hands generally are going to be clear the fuck out here. Uh, now I got to find storage for it. Because I have, I don't know how it happened, but I have a lot of stuff. My shop is full. Thing I found out about building a shop is it's not big enough. When you first have it, it's like, holy shit, this is like the greatest thing ever. And then if you had a couple of years, it's like, I should have built this shop bigger. There's another friggin' eight foot that way on the other side of that wall. I'm going kicking myself in the ass that I didn't extend this shop all the way out to that outside wall. Because that side over there, if you watched when I did the uh, uh, explosion proof fan install for my spray booth, you've seen what the outside, what that side looks like over there. It's, it's like a fucking horror movie mess out there. It's, it needs to be redone, reorganized. I gotta get somebody up here with a damn trailer so I can, we can do a scrap run. A uh, lot of, a lot of fucking metal and shit out there that I can throw away. <clears throat> Anyways, I have no real purpose in this video other than, yeah, it's a video. I make videos just because I like to make the videos. As soon as I stop liking to make videos, I'm not going to do it anymore. Uh, I didn't want to make one on how to build a crosscut sled because so many other people have before and it took hours and hours to build. So you'd be looking at probably, probably 15 video clips, 30 minute video clips, because that's all my camera records, that I would have to sort through, I'd have to edit it out to get it down to some what of a fucking usable video, even though my videos have a tendency of being uh, overly long. Nobody watches them all the way through, because who the fuck wants to sit there and watch an hour long goddamn YouTube video when most of them are only 10 to 15 minutes. So yeah, being a shitty YouTuber, I'm not good at editing the videos down to a good usable size, plus my God, does editing suck. It is so freaking tedious and boring. So anytime I make a video now, I think I've made a conscious effort that I'm gonna do my best, that it's gonna be one clip, zero, close to a zero amount of editing as I have to. Drop in my intro fucking stupid music with my logo on there, drop the video in, hit uh, uh, upload or whatever it is, freaking to combine the video, save it to my computer, upload it to YouTube, pfft, done. You know, half hour fucking process. Because some of these videos like, uh, oh shit, no, the flag videos, my pumpkin bowl videos, some of these things. I mean, I sat there for like three, four hours editing the fucking things and I'm just done doing that. Uh, it's taken the fun out of YouTube and I'm not doing this for fucking money. Oh, I've made like 200 bucks off of YouTube so far. I shouldn't say I made 200 bucks because I've spent like $1,800 on fucking cameras and, and audio equipment and everything else like that. But they've given me 200 bucks in return. Got to start somewhere, right? Anyways, I'm done ranting for now. I'm going to go turn my stereo back on. Maybe drink a couple more beers. Uh, see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe, like, whatever. Go watch somebody else's video to learn how to make one of these things. Uh, because, well... There's a lot of them out there. See you guys.